Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to do something a little bit different. You see, I've had access to a Total War Saga Troy for quite some time now and I wanted to do a short but concise review about the state of the game and see if it's worth you guys getting it or not. For full disclosure, Creative Assembly did give me an early access key as part of being in their official content partner program, but that in no way has affected my final thoughts on the game, so without further ado, let's begin. A Total War Saga Troy is the newest installment in the Total War franchise of games and the second saga title of its series. Inspired by Homer's Iliad, a Total War Saga Troy focuses on the historical flashpoint of the Trojan War. Here you'll be able to play through the perspective of these events through eight epic heroes, four Greeks and four Trojans. For the Greeks we have Achilles, warlord of the Myrmidons, King Agamemnon, king of Mycenae, Odysseus, lord of Ithaca, and Menelaus, king of Sparta. And for the Trojans we have Hector, prince of Troy, Paris, Prince of Troy, Aeneas, Lord of Dardania, and finally Sarpedon, King of Lycia. All of these epic heroes have their own unique faction, mechanic and playstyles, leading for a decent level of replayability for this game. But let's not waste any more time on the character selection screen and let's jump right into the game. The game itself is visually stunning, which is very obvious when you look through the campaign map, a lot of little detail has been added there. The same can also be said about the battle maps, where the maps themselves are quite large, visually look great, which helps as battles themselves seem to last a lot longer now, even with smaller armies. This is a step in the right direction, as battles have always generally been too quick in the Total War series. Hero duels have returned, but without the silly challenge mechanic which was found in Three Kingdoms. Now your hero, which is geared to kill other heroes, can finally do so. Back on the campaign map, you'll notice that resources have drastically changed in a Total War Saga Troy. Your kingdom's economy is no longer based on just gold, but rather food, wood, stone, bronze and gold. A stronger sense of realism in Total War, I'd never thought I'd see the day, but this is a step in the right direction. However, it must be known for players wanting to pick up this title that it is a bit harder to micromanage multiple resources. Now you will notice in this part of the video that we are in the second turn of a new campaign. In our previous turn, we had won a battle and our character had leveled up, but unfortunately we didn't spend the skill point, and also I didn't initiate any research on the first turn, because well, I completely forgot if I'm honest. There is no longer a prompt at the end of a turn which tells you that you've not done such and so. I'm a very forgetful person and I must admit that I use that mechanic to, well, remind me of these things. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. If you fall behind on research, you will fall behind against enemy factions. Diplomacy takes inspiration from Free Kingdoms, but in a much more streamlined way, which in my opinion is absolutely fantastic. No more having to go through all these different subsections trying to find exactly what you want. It's quick, precise, in and out and back into waging war. The Divine Will mechanic is a way for you to receive temporary buffs from your chosen god of the Greek pantheon by paying tribute to them. This can vary in terms of economic buffs, military growth and so on, but I'll be honest, unless I'm constantly reminded about it like I was on stream once, I completely forgot about it in most cases. The variance in army roster for each of the faction is quite enjoyable, considering that all the factions, even from the same culture, vary in playstyle. However, it is important to note for people who enjoy cavalry based builds, you're not going to get that here. Unless you're building armies of chariot riders or recruiting as many of the possible centaur units as you can, which are very limited by the way, you're not going to get a horse based build. This is not a complaint, but rather a word of warning to any potential players. Let's lightly brush on the mythical units. What you're seeing on screen right now is what classifies as a mythical unit in a Total War Saga Troy. The horse riders are centaurs and the guys on foot are considered giants. Now in all honesty, it feels like Creative Assembly tried to appease both the fantasy players and the historical players by making these guys human. Speaking primarily as a fantasy player, I believe they could just have shown the mythical creatures as they are represented in mythology. But I understand with the historical fans getting rather sick of fantasy settings. 
but if they're going to be added in any way, shouldn't they look as to how they're represented in mythology, rather than just random humans who people seem to think are mythological beasts? Perhaps my biggest problem with a Total War Saga Troy isn't so much a problem with the game, but rather with the Total War franchise in general. Sieges are still pretty boring in all honesty, now don't get me wrong, the new siege maps look absolutely incredible, the one I'm showing off in this part of the video is absolutely stunning, with siege maps varying in size in this game, from decently small to downright huge, the problem is the format is still the same, you have access to invisible ladders on your units, battering rams and siege towers in some cases. I don't know if it's just me, but I seem to find it easier just mindlessly throwing my armies at the enemy gates than waiting for a battering ram to arrive, especially since some mythical units excel at bashing down gates. The game soundtrack is absolutely incredible. Honestly, I've just found myself leaving the game on and just chilling to some background noise from it. I'll leave a few seconds on here so you guys can check it out for yourselves. Cool, isn't it? Now I want to brush upon something lightly, that of mod support not appearing until September and no multiplayer until November. These are quite big negatives, especially for the Total War community, as obviously modding and Total War has always come hand in hand. The same thing for multiplayer, people quite enjoy playing multiplayer battles, but we have to take into account there has been a worldwide pandemic happening which may or may not have affected this. But now the elephant in the room, epic exclusivity for a whole year. Yeah, I wasn't happy about this either guys, believe me. I, like many others, prefer my games in one location. Steam is my go-to program, but I understand that Creative Assembly want to explore other platforms. If this exclusivity deal is granting the community a free game, well, maybe it's worth it for just this once. A free game is a free game, and it seems that Creative Assembly have a lot of high hopes for it. This is obvious when we look at the roadmap, as it shows plans for future DLC. There are a lot of people put off by the whole Epic Games thing, understandably so for one reason or another. Originally I thought maybe I might not even cover the game until it releases on Steam. But I'm happy to say I made the right decision playing it. I mean, I would have had to wait an extra year to get the game. By that point, the hype for it would have just died down and I would have honestly just forgotten about it. If I had to rate the game out of 10, I'd give it around a 7.5. Is the game perfect? No, but there's still room for improvement. And honestly, there are a few things implemented into Troy, which I hope get implemented into Total War Warhammer 3. I'll probably cover that in a video in the near future. I do recommend this title, it still feels like a Total War game and that's the most important thing to me. Just a reminder to all of you thinking about picking the game up, a Total War Saga Troy releases this August the 13th. You can pick it up from the Epic Game Store and for the first 24 hours of release you can get it for free and it will stay free on that account. If you're watching this review after the 13th, the game will no longer be free and you will have to pay for it, but I do recommend this product. I'm going to try and get to stream it every now and then, and I want to try and showcase the game a bit better. This was my first ever review thing on the channel, so if you have any suggestions on how I can improve upon this, please let me know. It was kind of weird to do something like this, but I really wanted to try my hand at it. But with that, my friends, we come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various different social media links such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord where you can get in contact with a great book team. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Using our special link and also our special code, both of which can be found in our description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A special thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Pence and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Huell and VS Vasan for subscribing to us at our fame level. 
Honestly, I can't thank you guys enough for the support. It really means a lot to me, especially since all the money earned from Patreon goes directly back onto the channel. New webcam, equipment, microphones, and so on. And a big thank you to all of you liking, sharing, commenting on these videos. Honestly, I'm really enjoying creating this content and chatting to all of you guys about speculation, new content, and so on. It's absolutely awesome. It's been nice to make a few friends along the way. But with that, my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and I shall see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.